Hey, Ferventeers, I miss you all. I hope things are going well. I want to continue on in our series called For the Kingdom. And today I specifically want to talk about just how Jesus became king. Every kingdom needs a king or a queen, right? And Jesus becomes king of his kingdom in a really unique way. Before we get there, though, I want to uh, thank everybody who was able to make it to the live stream on Tuesday where we talked about the Sermon on the Mount, this extended teaching that Jesus gave showing us uh, what, what his kingdom is all about and what it looks like for us to live in his kingdom. And, and one of the clearest themes that comes out of reading the Sermon on the Mount or anything when we talk about the kingdom of God is that Jesus' kingdom is in a lot of ways upside down and backwards. It's different than any other kingdom uh, in terms, and it's different in how we live in this kingdom. We'll talk more about that in a second. But like I said, every kingdom needs a king or a queen. And, and and you might have heard of like a coronation, this really fancy ceremony where everybody gets dressed up and there's fancy music playing and it's usually in like a, a big church building or something like that. And all the, the, uh, the powerful and the elite in a certain country come together and they watch the coronation of a new king or queen. Well, as we're going to see today, the way Jesus becomes king, Jesus' coronation is very, very different. Because, you see, the gospel writers make it clear that Jesus' coronation, the way that Jesus became king, was during his crucifixion, when he was being killed. Uh, they, they describe it that at one point, uh, some of the soldiers put a purple robe on him and they give him a staff and, and a crown of thorns. They make him look like a king in some ways, but it's all in a way that they're mocking him. Or, or, and in the case of the crown of thorns, it's painful to him. Uh, later, when he's on the cross, they have it written above him, here is the king of of the Jews. Again, they're mocking him, but, but in, in some upside down way that only God can manage, this is the point where Jesus becomes king. It's through his obedience, his willingness to die on the cross for all of us. And then, of course, God raises him up uh, where he, he rules forever. We'll get back to that in a moment. I also wanted to read you an interesting interaction from John chapter 18 where Jesus is talking with the Roman governor of the area called Pilate. And we pick it up in verse 33. It says, Then Pilate went back into the headquarters, summoned Jesus, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you asking this on your own, or have others told you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Pilate replied. Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not of this world, said Jesus. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I wouldn't be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. You are a king then, Pilate asked. You say that I am a king, Jesus replied. I was born for this, and I have come into the world for this, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? asked Pilate. This interaction between Jesus and Pilate is fascinating for a couple of reasons. First, Jesus reminds Pilate his kingdom is not of this world. He's not looking for a revolution. He's not looking to be just the king of any geographical location. No, Jesus' kingdom is much bigger than that. Jesus, uh, after his resurrection and ascension into heaven, where he sits at the right hand of the Father, Jesus is the king of the whole world. Every ruler and power is subject to him. And then we also see Jesus' kingdom is how we ultimately view truth. When we want to know how to view truth in our world today, how we navigate the world around us, we have to look through the lens of not only Jesus, but his kingdom and what his kingdom is all about in this world. 
So a fair question to ask then is, uh, what does this mean? What, what does this mean for us? Like, I love the idea, yeah, Jesus is king of the world. Uh, even right now, and then he'll come back one day and he'll, he'll physically be here ruling on this earth forever. But what, what does this mean for all of us right now? Well, one, the way Jesus became king through death and through resurrection, once again, it reminds us that Jesus' kingdom is different than any other kingdom of this world. It's upside down. It's backwards. And we, as people in his kingdom, are called to live the same way. We're called to live lives of selflessness, of sacrifice, of loving even our enemies, of going out of our way to care for the least of these. That's the kind of kingdom that King Jesus desires. Like I said before, this also reminds us that the person that we've put our faith and our hope and our trust in, he's not just looking to be king of a certain a place or a certain time. No, Jesus is the king of the universe forever. We, we tr our trust is in the Savior and the king of the whole world. And, and, and that encourages us that even as we go through a time like this where, where it's a challenge and things are different, we're, 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 rem we're reminded and we remember that Jesus is ultimately in control. We can go to him and we can trust him as king. That even if the situation doesn't end up the exactly the way we hope it would, we can still trust that King Jesus is near us, he's with us, and he will save us. It also reminds us that when we pray, we're not just praying to anybody or maybe someone who only has a little bit of power. No, when we pray, when we talk to God, we are t we're t and when we talk to Jesus, we're talking to the ruler of the universe. And that to me is a great encouragement. That to me uh, is what a motivation to pray. I, I am talking to the person who is in charge of everything and he wants to talk to me too. So I want to encourage you guys uh, to continue, one, to look for those phrases in the Gospels of the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of heaven is like. Continue to look for those teachings that Jesus gave on what exactly the kingdom of God is like. But I want to encourage you to consider in the days of head, ahead uh, that Jesus is king and the way he became king is so different. It points us, it always reminds us of who Jesus is and, and who God is, that he's a God of love, that out of great love, Jesus was willing to give his life to save us, to, to, um, to transform us, and, and, and that same Jesus is ruling as king of the world. I love you guys, and I'll be in touch soon. Have a good day.